Welcome to part four. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. End times part four. Does the day of the Lord come before the last day? There's a lot of debate about that. That there's through two trumpets. That there's two specific days that the Lord is going to rise people up. And if you joined us for the first three parts, you you would have gotten the the line of what Jesus was saying and how Jesus was teaching this. And, and obviously we cannot go against what Jesus is teaching. But let's, let's dig, dig a bit deeper and see uh, what Jesus says. Furthermore, so first we're going to just start in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 1 to 2. Um, now you do not need to have anybody write to you about the times and the dates, brother. For you yourself know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So something that's very important when we study this, Day of God, Day of the Lord, all these different days, uh, do, do they have one golden line that ties them together? Or is it separate days? And one of these things that you can look at is that it will come like a thief in the night. So Second Peter 3 verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So we're talking about the same day. In which the heavens will pass away with a rushing noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, and the earth and the works in it will be burned up. So, so on the day of the Lord, we have established that it will come like a day of in night. And on that day, we've established, according to 2 Peter 3, verse 10, that everything will be destroyed. So there will be a massive war. The rider on the white horse will come down and with a sword of his mouth destroy the Antichrist and his armies. And everything will be destroyed and melted down. Okay, so Revelation 16, verse 14 to 16. Uh, they are demon spirits that perform signs. They go to the kings of the whole earth and gather them for the war of a great day of God Almighty. See, I come like a thief. He just puts it in there. It's like it's the day of the Lord because it, it comes like a thief. How blessed is the person who remains alert and keeps his clothes on. He won't have to go naked and let anyone see his shame. The spirits gather the kings to the place that is called Armageddon in Hebrew. What do we know? We know about the battle of Armageddon. And at the battle of Armageddon, what do we know? We know that there will be a last day, a last battle. So on the day of God, it will be also the last day. So the day of Armageddon, day of God, the day of where everything melts, day of the Lord, same thing. Then in Acts, we read, the sun will become dark and the moon turn to blood before the coming of a great and glorious day of the Lord. She so said, now we see something else. We see that the sun becomes dark and the, and, and the moon turns to blood. Then in Luke 21, speaking about the end times, Jesus says, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars, and there will be distress in the earth among the nations that are confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves, global warming, People will faint from fear and apprehension because of the things that are to come on the inhabitants of the world. Because the powers of heavens will be shaken and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your hands because your deliverance is approaching. When you see the stress of the nations, when you see global warming, you see food shortages, you see weather events, you see earthquakes, you see all these things happening, and you see how God's wrath is being poured out on earth, then rise your hands because your redemption is drawing close. Because the day of the Lord will come when the sun is darkened and the moon turns to blood. In 2 Thessalonians 2, from verse 1 to 8, we now ask you, brothers, regarding the coming of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, and our gathering together with Him, our gathering together with Jesus in the clouds, the rapture, not to be quickly upset or alarmed when some claim that we, that we said, either by some spirit, conversation, or letter, that the day of the Lord has already come. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for it will not come unless the rebellion takes place first, and the man of sin who is destined for destruction is revealed. The day of the Lord will not come until the Antichrist has been revealed. 
He opposes and exalts himself about every so-called God and object of worship. As a result, he seats himself in the sanctuary of God. The Antichrist sits in the temple, in the third temple. And himself declares that he is God. Do, don't you remember that I repeatedly told you about the things when I was still with you? You know what it is that is now holding him back. So that he will be revealed when his time comes. For the secret of a lawlessness is already at work. But only until the person, the person who holds it back gets out of the way. Not the church who holds it back. Not the Christians who holds it back. No Christian could ever hold Satan back. No Christian could ever stop what is going to come on the earth because it's been prophesied by God. Only Jesus Christ could keep him back. That's why the, 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 he's not coming. That's why he's postponing the time. Because God wants everybody to be saved. But there will be a day when Jesus draws back and says, okay, go for it. And the Antichrist will just come and, like a flood. And then... The lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. So at Jesus' coming, he will destroy the Antichrist. On the day of the Lord, he will destroy the Antichrist. Up until then, there will be peace and the Antichrist will come and bring peace. And then there will be a great mass following of the Antichrist, believing that he's the Messiah. But nothing will happen until Jesus comes on the clouds takes us up to him on the same day and again and destroy the, the Antichrist and his armies. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse, verse 8 And then when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. We read about this in Revelation 19 verse 5, 15 to 21. A sharp sword comes out of the mouth to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod and tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw the angels standing in the sun. You see again, in the sun, there will be signs in the sun. And he cries out with a loud voice to all the birds flying overhead. Come, gather for the great supper of God. Eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of commanders, the flesh of warriors, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, both free and slave, both unimportant and important. Then I saw the beast, the king of the earth, and their armies gathered to wage war against the rider of the horse and his armies. Not against other nations. Not a third world war, but a, a war against God. The beast was captured along with a false prophet who had performed signs in his, on his behalf. By these signs, the false prophet had deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Both of them were thrown alive into a lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The rest were killed by the sword that belongs to the rider on the horse and that came from his mouth. And all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. So let's see something very interesting. The birds gorged themselves on the flesh according to Reve uh, Revelation 19 verse 21. That Jesus predicted us. Remember I said... I think it was in part 2. I said we're going to get back to this. Matthew 24, 26 to 31. So if I say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not look for him. And if I say to you, look, he is in the storm, don't believe it. Because just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpses there, the vultures will gather. So, Revelations, the killing of the Antichrist, the last war, Armageddon, the birds will come and gorge themselves from the flesh of the armies that fought against God. Jesus predicts that. He says when he comes on the clouds, then the birds will, 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 will eat the flesh of the armies. Immediately after the trouble of those days, immediately after the birds has come to eat the flesh, of those who warred against, uh, against God, of those who warred against the rider on the white horse. Immediately after those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the bells of heaven will be shaken loose. 
then the son of, the son of man will appear in the sky. And all the tribes of the land will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send now these angels with a loud trumpet blast and they will gather the elect from the four, four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Can you see that after the Antichrist has been destroyed, after the birds has caught themselves on the flesh of the armies, after that, Jesus will send out his angels to gather the elect and take them up to him in the clouds. The rapture will be after Armageddon. But won't today's Christians be exempt from a great tribulation? We'll answer that question in part 5. Bless you.